Hello there, minions. We're going to have some fun facts about Charles Darwin, the father of modern evolution. Turns out Charles Darwin shares a birthday with Abraham Lincoln, which is February 12th. We just celebrated his birthday known as National Darwin Day this past weekend. Turns out for the father of modern evolution, Darwin started life as a creationist and through his findings and scientific evidence actually finished life as an agnostic. So we've given a lot of evidence to evolution being a thing, but we haven't actually defined evolution. So this discussion is going to talk about a little bit of what it is and a lot of what it isn't. First of all, evolution is gradual change over many generations within a population. It is not one individual suddenly becoming different, and it's usually pretty slow, like we saw with the whales. However, there are many exceptions to the rule. There are certain fish and even squirrel populations who will change their mating habits depending on climate change in the local area. Here's another basic misconception about evolution. A lot of people think adaptation leads to evolution, where it can actually be argued quite the opposite. Evolution is more the result of change and selection over time. And those changes and those selections, which are all random by the way, lead to a better adapted population of individuals that are better suited to pass along those traits to their offspring. So big idea number one when it comes to evolution is that genetic variation and mutation are the raw materials that drive it. A mutation is a random change in the base sequence of DNA that gets passed down to offspring. Now the emphasis here is on random. This isn't something chosen by the organism or selected for by Mother Nature. This is something that just happens as a matter of chance, not a matter of choice. It used to be thought that giraffes developed their long necks because shorter necked versions of their ancestors actually were reaching for their food for a long period of time. That's not the way it worked. The mutation for long necks showed up, it proved itself to be an advantage, and it was kept in the population over time. And talking about having a hunger for knowledge, this guy takes the cake. Of many species that he collected, some of which being endangered, the dude ate them. In fact, he was a known foodie and loved joining societies that dined on the flesh of rare animals. Organisms that produce offspring via sexual reproduction also lend a lot of genetic variation to DNA sequences. When gametes or sex cells are formed, a process known as crossover is going to cause the DNA sequences of each of the sex cells to be different than that of the parent. On top of that, each parent, male and female, then lends half of the genetic material to the offspring, producing things that are similar to mom and dad, but still different all on their own. And for some of you, that might be a good thing. Another big misconception when it comes to evolution is that the idea of survival of the fittest means survival of the strongest. That's not how it really works. The fittest, in terms of biology, are those individuals that give themselves the best option to reproduce within their environment. It's about baby making. The strongest individuals mean those that make the most offspring that pass along their genetic line. Good thing nature has a way of weeding out a lot of individuals, and humans are no exception. Oh yeah, that guy's a winner. So we've used this term natural selection quite a bit in this discussion. And what I think it gives some of you the impression of is that Mother Nature or the Earth is somehow deciding which individuals get to stay and which get to go. But it doesn't work like that. Essentially what natural selection is, is the presence of obstacles in the natural surroundings of an organism. If you're adapted to deal with those and then reproduce, well, then you survive. You've been naturally selected for. Another thing not to believe, and we said this earlier, is that nature gives you what you need. That isn't how it works. Remember, mutation is random. And if that random change is beneficial, then you get to benefit by reproducing more of your own genetic line. A perfect example of natural selection is the story of the peppered moth. Back in England in the late 1800s, 99% of moths had a white color, which allowed them to be masked by the lichens on the trees in the area, keeping them from getting eaten by birds and other predators. As the Industrial Revolution revved up, lichens, which liked to have clean air to live, died off, and the bark of the trees eventually darkened. And what happened to the moth population was pretty amazing. The black moths, which used to only consist of about 1% of the population, 
completely flipped its role. By 100 years after the Industrial Revolution, the black moth actually composed 99% of the population, while the white peppered moth went down to being 1%. A complete role reversal caused by natural selection. All right, so evolution is eventually gonna give us the production of a brand new species. But to start, what is a species? Well, it's a population of interbreeding individuals that produce offspring which themselves can also reproduce. Now this is different than a hybrid. Hybrids are when closely related species get together and produce offspring, but they cannot in fact go ahead and continue to reproduce. This would be things like the old mule, or a zorus, or a liger. And these are fake hybrids. Oh, that's grotesque. Oh, that guy's horrible, but I kind of want one as a pet. Speciation, or the creation of a brand new species, can be driven by something called geographic isolation. This is when one parent species ends up getting separated by some physical barrier. Now, physical barriers can be a river, a mountain range, it can be the result of plate tectonics. Take the Galapagos Islands, 18 little islands off the coast of South America, where Darwin's finches from the mainland were all brought. And over time, what we found was that on each island, the finches adapted a beak that suited it for the type of food and environment that they found themselves in. And over time, they developed into brand new species that no longer mated with one another. And finally, little fun fact for you. For a guy who believed in genetic variation, Darwin didn't really follow his own suit. Turns out he married his first cousin and had 10 children with her, most of which had some sort of medical maladies because of the inbreeding that the Darwin and Woodbridge family were notorious for. Darwin himself went through a lifelong struggle with something that doctors could never quite put their finger on until it got the best of them. And that's Darwin's fun facts. If you don't believe me, JGI.